always respond as though the greeting was part of a song. I am just wondering what key that was. Good evening. Uh, yeah. So we'd like to pray and then we'll just immediately begin our prayer service. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for your presence in our midst. We thank you that we get to present our issues to you. It is not a, it's not a thing we take for granted, Lord. We know that we have been in places or we have been in times before you saved us where we had issues and we had no idea what to do with them. But Lord, you have given us access to the very throne room of God. And so we come into your presence today with confidence that everything that we commit to you today, you are very well able to handle it, to take care of it, to respond to us, to teach us, to show us what your will is. And so Lord, we, we are here specifically to hear from you and so we are listening even as we sing our songs of worship to you in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Thank you. 
God and King. Sous les hauts 
Amen. 
Tuakupenda mwana Tuakupenda Wastaili Tell me, 
you are the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And we bless you. Jambeleza ko mungu wangu Nikiwa nazo heshi mazote Nina kiria
the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus. 
Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart.
This is our invitation. This is our invitation. That Jesus, you would come and be the center of our lives. And be the center of our church. Be the center of everything about us. Be the center of everything about us. I invite you, my brother. I invite you, my sister. Wherever you are, wherever you're following this prayer service from, I'd, I'd like you to just go ahead and join together with just the way the team led us. And let's invite Jesus and say, Jesus, be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of our church. Be the center of everything about us because we don't want to live without Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everything revolves around you. You recognize that everything revolves around Jesus. Make it your prayer. Just tell him, Jesus, would you, would you come? Would you minister to me? Would you meet me at the point of my needs? Would you satisfy me with every good thing? Oh, it's our prayer today, Lord Jesus. It's our prayer today that you would do exactly that. It's our prayer that, Father, you would come and rule and reign in our lives. It's our prayer, Jesus, that you would come and satisfy us. Oh, God. Oh, God, we invite you today. We invite you today. We recognize our desperateness. We recognize that without you, we are nothing. We recognize that, Lord, indeed, it's you who makes a difference in our lives. It's you who picks us and walks with us and leads us and guides us and helps us to be so much more for your kingdom purposes. Oh, Oh God, this is our prayer today. Jesus, this is our cry. Come. Oh, come Lord Jesus. Go ahead, my brother. Go ahead. Just, just invite him. Go ahead, my sister. Just talk to him and tell him, Jesus, come. You're the center of everything about me. I desire you more than anything else. I, I long for you as a deer, uh, you know, pants or longs for the streams of living water. Just go ahead and make that your prayer. Make that your prayer. Indeed, we join with the psalmist as, as he cried out, as he cried out, as the deer pants for streams of water. So my soul pants for you, my God, because we need him. Oh, we need him. There is nothing else that we need more than the Lord. There is nothing else that we desire more than the Lord. You see, it's so easy for us as human beings to desire to think that there is something else that can satisfy, that there is something else that we can go after, that there is something else that we can get that will cause us to be well. But the truth is there is nothing else. There has never been nothing else can compare Nothing else can liken unto Jesus. And so we call out to you today. Oh God Almighty. We call out to you today, Father, from homes scattered all over the city of Mombasa. Oh God, we call out to you today. Oh Lord Almighty, from homes around the nation of Kenya, around the continent of Africa. We call out to you, Jehovah Father. My God, from workplaces and homes uh, and, 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 and all kinds of places all over this city. And all over the cities of, of, of Africa, the cities of, of the nations of the earth, Jehovah Father, oh God Almighty, I know there are people that are following this, Jehovah God, my Father, from, from the nation of the United States of America, I know there are people in Europe, I know there are people in Israel, dear God, that are following this, I know there are people in the Middle East, I know, Father, that the people in Asia, in China, my God, the islands of the sea, all over Africa, my God, we call out to you today, would you come, Jesus, because it doesn't matter where we come from, it doesn't matter where we live, it doesn't matter our profession it doesn't matter Jehovah God what it is that uh, we are experiencing right now whether it's night or day it doesn't matter it's you that we desire and it's you that we long for and it's you that we invite and say come come and take over come and satisfy come and lead us come and fill us with wisdom come, come and guide us my God come and take us where we have never been for we long for you oh God we long for you we long for you in our struggles my Lord, when we go through difficulties of all kinds, it's you that we need and it's you that we desire. Sometimes we think it's the money that we need. Sometimes we think that, Lord, we need a better job. Sometimes we think, Jehovah God, that, that it's uh, food that we need and then just different kinds of food. Sometimes we think, my God, it's a promotion and we seek after all these things. My God, but today we recognize that everything that we need is embodied in you, Jesus. You are the son of the living God. You are our savior. You are our deliverer. You are our king you're our god it's you that we call out to today i call out to you jesus even as my brothers and sisters are calling out to you oh we call out to you we call out to you truth is lord book of psalm chapter 42 is not just a story that was written by the sons of Korah. It, it's what we feel it's what we experience 
verse number two of that uh, chapter that the Bible says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with my God? And here we are in our prayer service, but the truth is, Lord, this indeed has been our cry. Our, our, our soul, my soul, oh God, thirsts for you, for you who is the living God. Lord, sometimes we try all kinds of things, but they don't satisfy. We chase after all kinds of things, but they don't satisfy. And so we come to you today. We come to you today. You're the one who has the, 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 the water of life. No wonder the woman in the book of John chapter 4, you told her, if you knew who it is, if you knew who it is. And so today we come to you because we recognize who you are. And we desire to even know you more and more so that we may live our lives for you, Jehovah Father. You're the bondage breaker. You're the one, my God, who deals with issues. You're the one that takes away weariness. You're the one that refreshes our souls. You're the one that lifts us and helps us to be able to live. My God, today we call out to you. We call out to you, Jehovah Father. We pray that you may meet us at the point of our needs. We pray that, God, you may satisfy us. We pray that, Father, you may hold our hands and walk with us and lead us and guide us and just take us where we have never been. Lord, we cry out to you today. I invite you, my brother and sister, to go ahead and just cry out to him. I don't know where you are at. I don't know what you're facing or what you're going through. Oh, I know, for example, in the city of Mombasa, there are people that have just gone through just a, a, a painful and frustrating weekend. As the president of the Republic of Kenya gave an announcement and said that the people of Mombasa are, are still under the cessation of movement. We can't leave this city. We can't go anywhere else. We can't visit brothers or sisters. We can't, we, we can't visit family. We can't go and see our, our parents. We're stuck here. We can't even travel for business. Oh, there are those that are longing to visit their loved ones. I know a husband that is stuck up in Akuru and he has been waiting for the day Mombasa will be opened up so that he can come back to his family. But he's not able to do that. I know a wife stuck up in Nairobi that desires to come to Mombasa to visit with family, see her children and her husband, but she's not able to do that. I know that the pain and frustration of that. Oh, I, I know, I, I know of, of, of just a, a couple that, that is dating and, and they're at that place where they would want to hang out, they would want to go on a date, but they can't because that this has brought a limitation. I'm just talking and fixing and, and focusing on relationship. Here is the thing. Here is the thing. Jesus is the only one that can satisfy. You're the only one that can satisfy, Lord. You're the only one that can help us in times of need like this, in the desperateness, in the frustration, in the disappointment, with hearts aching. My God, would you minister to these people that I mentioned? Mm. Oh God, we need you. We need you. We need you, my brothers and sisters, you know, in, in times like those, only, only Jesus can be able to see the pain and see the frustration and satisfy you. But that, those are not the only things. What about financial pressure, financial needs of all kinds, debts that, that have weighed you down and, and, and you look at your life and you wonder, is this all that I will ever experience? I believe that God can break the yoke of debt and give you deliverance and freedom. But here is the thing, he is the only one you need, not the money, not more money. Because when you find Christ, he will be able to begin to meet and minister to all kinds of issues. In your pain, he will sit with you. He's the one who wipes away our tears. In our disappointments, he will be right there. In our sickness and disease, he's our healer. He's the one who comes alongside of us and brings healing to us. One word from Jesus, just one word from Jesus can change your life completely. And so I call you today, I call you today to just begin to lift up your issues, to lift up your burdens, to lift up your problems and, and your circumstances, whatever it might be that you're praying about today. Would you raise it up before Jesus and just begin to intercede over your life? And I will join together with you and I am praying together with you today because I am believing Jesus to show up in your life and show up in your circumstances and perform all kinds of miracles. Oh, we are believing him today that he will bring healing. And if you're, a, if you're sick, you're unwell in your body, we are believing together for the supernatural healing that comes from God. Because we believe that our God heals. We will pray very specifically today, just over death and death situations, and believe Jesus to break the yoke of death and set his people free. I believe he's well able to do that. And so if you have debt and debt issues, 
Just begin to pray over those even right now. You have work situations. Maybe your business is not doing well. Maybe even you're, you're being sent home on unpaid leave. We are going to pray about that tonight. We are going to believe God together. And so just lift up those issues before the Lord. Whatever the issue might be, just raise it up before Jesus. And I'm joining together with you. We are praying over these things and believing God to minister to you. And so make it your prayer. Just go ahead, make it your prayer. Just call upon the name of Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus. Oh, I joined together with my brothers and sisters today, Lord Almighty, to pray, knowing that you're the one that satisfies us. Oh God, you are the one that satisfies us. You are the living God. You are the God who rules and reigns from everlasting to everlasting. You are the God who knows our circumstances. You know our situations. You know what it is that we are facing even right now. And so we come to you today in prayer. Oh Lord Almighty, we come to you calling upon your name and asking of you, Jesus, would you stretch forth your hand? Would you minister to us by your Holy Spirit? Would you deal with these issues that my brothers and sisters are lifting up before you? My God Almighty, some of them are relationship issues. My God, we're believing together today that you will minister, you will bring encouragement to you, you will just uh, Lord, satisfy those that are finding themselves at the place where uh, they are separated by distance, they're separated by time, they're separated, Lord Almighty, and cannot be able to be together just because of what we're going through. I am believing you today, my God, in the name of Jesus, would you see their cry? Would you see their pain, oh God? Would you minister to them? Would you bring encouragement to them, Jehovah? I pray today that, dear God, in the name of Jesus, you you will take care of them. Oh God Almighty, some of them are finding them, uh, themselves at the place where Lord, it, it began with 21 days and then it became another 21 days and it went to another 21 days and now Jehovah Father, they have been added another 30 days and they don't know how they'll be able to cope with this. I pray my Father, would you take care of your people? Would you take care of your children oh Lord? Would you minister and encourage and keep them and walk with them my Father? Would you surround them with your wall of protection my God and may the favor of the Most High God rest upon them. My King, I pray take care of them. Oh, take care of them, Jehovah Father. Oh God, oh God, oh God, we believe you together today. We pray, Father, that you would take care of those that are finding themselves facing sickness and disease time after time and they don't know what to do. My Lord, sometimes we recognize that doctors don't even have a solution. Medical science may fail us. My God, but I know that you are our healer and you will never fail us. Your word says you will never leave us nor forsake us. And your word gives us a sure promise, my father, that you are faithful. You are the faithful God. You're completely dependable and reliable. You are God and you are our healer. And today we pray that God you bring healing. I pray for every person that is listening to me and praying together with me tonight, dear God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bring healing to them. I pray that you will satisfy them, Jehovah Father, as you minister, as you cause every bacteria, every virus, every disease causing organism in their body, to die, to disintegrate, dear God, in the name of Jesus. And we command cells and tissues and muscles and organs to begin to function the way that they're supposed to function, Jehovah Father. Would you take away pain? Would you take away pain? My God, today, would you realign organs? Would you cause them to function properly, my Father? I pray even for creative miracles that begin to create new organs, new cells, new tissues. Oh God, perform the miracle because you are God and there is none like you. Oh, there is none like you, my God. And so I believe you today for creative miracles, Jehovah Father. I believe you today to recreate organs, Jehovah God, in the name of Jesus. I recognize that there are couples that are listening to me and praying together with me tonight that have been desiring to have a child and they can't have because Lord Almighty of a medical issue. My Lord, as we believe you for healing, we are asking that you would deal with the issue. Whatever it might be, my God, in the name of Jesus, let there be a spiritual surgery that you do by your spirit. And you begin to cause organs, my father, to begin to function properly again. So that, Lord, your people may experience a miracle that comes from you, Lord. Because your word says that children are a gift from God. And I pray that you would do exactly that. Would you bless your people with the miracle that they have been trusting and waiting. And believing and hoping and longing for, oh God. I pray that God will hear testimonies about this. Because you will come through. You will make a way. You will deal with issues, Jehovah Father. In the next one month, we will hear testimonies. In the next one month, we will hear testimonies, my Father, that you're doing this. Oh God, we believe in you and we trust in you. We trust in you, Jehovah Father. Tonight, Lord, we lift up the mountain of debt before you. 
many, many, many people in the body of Christ, many of us have learned to live with debt and we think it's okay. We think it's cool. Even though your word says that, that Lord, the borrower is slave to the lender. And so there are so many that are following this prayer service that are slaves, oh God. They are slaves to their lenders. Slaves to their lenders. If you are to ask them tonight to give all their offerings, they will not be able to do that. Because some of that offering needs to go to pay, uh, uh, some of that money needs to go to pay debts. And so Lord, I am lifting them up before you and praying, let them go free. Let them go free. Just like you told Moses to go and declare to Pharaoh, let my people go. Tonight I command my father, let your people go free. My God, my God, may finances set your people free. You said in your word, Lord Jesus, that we cannot serve God and money at the same time. And so tonight I pray in the name of Jesus, let them be set free from debt. Let, let them be set free, my father, from rents that have not been paid, that are accumulating. Let them be set free, Jehovah Father. I am believing tonight, Jehovah God, for debts of all kinds. My Lord, to be cleared, to be dealt with. I know it's in the middle of a pandemic. The economy is not doing well. But God, I rise up in faith today. And I pray, Father, that there will be a difference. My Lord, because you will set your people free. You will begin to break that yoke of debt. And you will cause them, my Lord, to experience an overflow in the name of Jesus. Because you're God. You're able to provide water in the wilderness. You can be able to give food, Lord Almighty, to multitudes, 5,000 and even more more my god what is debt to you you can be able to break it it doesn't matter whether it's ten thousand or fifty or five million my god tonight i come to you by faith and i pray god of heaven demonstrate your greatness and your power and your goodness as you tear down this stronghold that has been holding your people Oh, would you go ahead and just, just make a prayer. You might not be the one in debt. Make a prayer right now. Would you go ahead? Just join together with me. Let's pray and believe God that people will be set free from the bondage of debt. Join together with me. Pray. And maybe if you're the one, you have a debt situation. Just go ahead. Join together with me. The Bible says that whatever two or three shall agree upon together, Touching on anything here on earth, it shall be done for them in heaven above. Stand on that word tonight. Just stand on that word tonight. I am standing on that word together with you. And I am believing God to deal with your debt issue. I'm believing God to deal with things and bills that have not been paid and are accumulating. My God, my God, we touch and agree. We touch and agree tonight. We touch and agree tonight with my brother. We touch and agree with my sister that, Lord, you are dealing with this. You're doing it in heaven above. When you gave the word, you meant it. When you spoke it, you meant it. Oh, God Almighty. And I feel this is the Rema word for tonight. My God, my God, my God. We turn to you. You're the one who satisfies. You're the one who performs miracles. You are the God Almighty. We touch and agree on this. We touch and agree on this. And my God, we pray, clear the debts that your people are facing. Clear the debts that we are facing. Clear the debts that we are dealing with, oh God, in the name of Jesus will not continue to carry debt week after week, week after week, month after month. Lord, no, 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 God. We cry out to you. We cry out to you for freedom. We pray, my Father, that you break this yoke, oh Lord, that we may go free, that we may breathe again, that we may live, that we may prosper, that we may soar, that we may be all that you desire. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we refuse to be slaves no more. We refuse to tolerate this. My God, we refuse to tolerate this. We, we recognize that we will never be able to break away from whatever it is that we are willing to tolerate. And so, Lord, we are not willing to tolerate this anymore. We believe you, God Almighty. We believe you for a season that is different. We believe you, Jehovah Father, in the middle of, pan of a pandemic. What a better time to demonstrate that you're God, that there is none like you. I pray that you will do it, Lord, for people. You would do it for your children. You would do it, Lord, for the glory and honor of your holy name. Oh, we are believing you tonight, Lord. We are rising up. We are rising up above everything else. And we are saying, God, our faith is in you. Our trust is in you. Our, our dependence is on you. God Almighty. God Almighty. God Almighty. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Just go ahead. Continue to make it your prayer. Continue to make it your prayer. Oh. Just go ahead and continue to call. Continue to call. 
on the name of Jesus. On the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. On the name of Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. There is none like you. There is none like you. There is none as mighty. There is none like you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus told his disciples the story, the parable of the man who woke up in the middle of the night because he had, he had visitors. And he went and knocked on the door of his neighbor and asked him to wake up and give him bread. But this man did not wake up <laughs> with the first or the second or the third knocking. But the Bible says because of the audacity of this neighbor, he kept on knocking until the friend had to wake up and come and give him bread. And tonight, that, that's what I want us to do. I, I want us to pray from a place of audacity, a place of daring to believe that our God answers prayer and that our God will turn situations around and our God will deal with, with whatever it is that you're going through and facing. Oh, that's what we're doing tonight. That's what we're doing tonight. We are believing. We are audaciously seeking from the Lord and believing Him for a miracle. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. You see, prayer causes things to happen that would never happen if we did not pray. And I believe that as we pray tonight and as we believe God, and as you keep on knocking on that door, healing is coming to somebody. And, and I believe, I am believing right now, you know, this is purely by faith that by the end of this service, there'll be people commenting below uh, on, on YouTube, commenting below on Facebook and just saying, hey, I, I, I came into this service, I, I was unwell, I had pain and, and I am healed, I am okay now, I have no more pain. I am believing that as we audaciously continue to knock and insist and say, God, I, I need you to do this, I need you to deal with this, I need you to turn this situation around, that there are people who receive financial miracles and they will testify even if not today, but they will testify and say, God provided for me. God broke the yoke of death. God made the way. Oh, yes, we are believing tonight because we are being audacious. God calls us to be audacious. He, he calls us to step into that place where we recognize that there is no other source. There is no other place we can go to. There is no, no one else we can run to. You see, in our generation, we normally think that we can run to the bank. We can run to a Shylock. We can run to somebody and just ask them for help. But tonight we are saying, no, I am not going anywhere else i am standing at the place of faith and i'm lifting up my eyes to god and i am believing that my source my help my hope and everything is from god oh we call upon your name jesus we call upon your name lord we believe you today to make a way we believe you today to turn situations around we believe you today that god you are more than enough for us you are more than enough for us you're the god who answers prayer you're the god who turns situations around and so our faith is in you our faith is in you, Jesus. Our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. Our trust is in you. Oh, let's continue to press in tonight. Let's continue to press in tonight. Jesus, I believe he's working right now. He's working in your life. He's performing that miracle. He's standing situations around. Oh, he's doing exactly that. My God is faithful and my God hears prayer. Jesus, Jesus, our Lord and our King. Our Lord and our King, from the depths of our hearts we call out to you and we say come. From the depths of our heart we ask of you, my God, would you glorify yourself? Would you glorify yourself in our lives? Would you glorify yourself in our circumstances and situations? Oh God, we call upon your name. We call upon your name. We call upon your name, Jesus. As you are praying, I'd like us to turn our eyes away from ourselves and begin to pray for our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, begin to pray for our churches, begin to pray for the cities where we dwell. And I say cities because I recognize that we are from all kinds of cities across the nation of Kenya, across the continent of Africa, across the nations of the world. And so for, it's time for us to pray for our cities and pray for our nations. 
go ahead and just begin to pray for your church. Begin to pray for the churches in your city. Begin to pray for your city. Begin to pray for your nation. Let's do that. Let's lift up our eyes to the Lord. And, and in the same theme, in the same thing, we, you know, we've been praying knowing that God is our source. He's our everything. He's the one that we need. He's the one that we desire. He's the one that we run after. And so we are praying today that our nation shall see the hand of the Lord. They shall know God. That many will come to experience the favor, the grace, and the goodness that comes from God. Oh yes. Oh yes. Let's pray. You know what it is that is going on in your city. Let's believe God and let's trust God together. For many of us, it's just uh, the, 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 the pandemic, the coronavirus uh, pandemic, you know, that, that has hit many nations of the world. For others, it's just the financial crisis that has, it has come uh, on, on the heels of, of the coronavirus. Oh, but there are some nations and some cities, and very specifically, uh, the United States of America, just facing uh, the multiple uh, protests, and, and some of them turning into riots and violence, and uh, burning and looting of property. And the leaders don't seem to be wanting to do anything to deal with this. Tonight, you know what? We are joining together and we are believing God to take a hold of President Donald Trump and cause him to begin to make decisions not based on political uh, expediency and just him wanting to do things his way. Tonight, we are going to ask our Father because the Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. That means that he can turn it around. He can, he can cause it to begin to do whatever it is that God desires. And so we are going to ask God to, to speak to this man and to speak to the leaders with him and his advice so that he will say things, he will speak things that will cause the nation of the United States of America to, to turn around and deal with this issue. Oh yes, tonight we are pressing in. And so go ahead, just press in. Let, just press in. Begin with your city, begin with your church, then go to the nation, and then we'll pray together for the United States of America and other nations. Let's do that. Let's lift up our prayers to the Lord and just press in because God is more than enough. He's the one that we desire more than anything else. Oh, Jesus, your word says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe also in me. And tonight we believe in you, Lord Jesus. We believe in you, our God and our King. That, Lord, you are our God. You are our King. You are ruling and reigning in our churches, in our cities, in our nations. And so we are not troubled. We are not troubled, Lord. We push away all anxiety and worry and fear and intimidation. And we lift up pastors in our cities. We lift up, Lord, men of God and women of God in our cities. We lift up churches before you. We lift up our brothers and sisters and even our leaders, our nation, in our nation, Jehovah Father, my God, we pray that you will work in the lives of these dear ones. You will cause them to trust in you, to wait upon you, to, to know you, to experience you. We pray that God, you'll do your work. You will glorify yourself. You'll cause them to walk in the fullness of your purposes, God of heaven, my King and my God. We pray, move by your Holy Spirit. We pray, walk by your Spirit, Jehovah Father. We pray that you will do your work, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Minister to this man. Minister to these women, Jehovah Father. Lead and guide them, Father. Intervene in their issues. Lord, I pray that many of them will come to know you and to live for you and to serve you and to walk with you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray for pastors that might be discouraged, ministers of the gospel that might be going through a tough time, a difficult time. My God, we lift them up before you and we pray that you provide for their needs according to your riches in glory. We pray that God, you roll away anxiety and fear. My God, some of them living under the bondage of fear, we pray that you break it so that they may find hope and help and relief in you. Oh God, would you do this work, Jehovah Father? Would you do your work in our nations, oh Lord? We pray that you break this coronavirus. My Father, it has persisted and persisted. I know many have prayed right across our nation, right across our cities, right across the nations of the earth. But tonight we join together and we say, Father, bring it to an end, oh God. Bring it to an end. When doctors and people in the med medical profession are telling us we've got to learn to live with it. Father, we lift up our prayer to you and we say, God, break it, break it, break it, Lord. Set us free to experience your greatness and goodness, dear God. Help us, Father. Help us, my King, to walk in your purposes, to walk in your ways, to walk in your will. I believe you, Jehovah Father, to do this. And tonight we join together with our brothers and sisters in the United States of America. They've been facing protests and, and riots and, and some of these Lord turning ugly and violent with looting and burning down and destroying of property. 
Today, dear God, very specifically we pray that, Lord, you would deal with the issue of racism in the United States of America. We pray, Jehovah Father, that, God, you will help the policemen in that country. It doesn't matter their political inclination. My God, I pray that you will cause them to begin to, to walk and, and, and live right, that they will not oppress your children. My Lord, I pray that you will deal with the issue of police brutality. And I know it exists not just in the U.S., but right across the nations of the earth. And today we pray, would you cause the men and women that are entrusted with the keeping of the law to be people that indeed keep the law, that they will do the right thing, that they don't, they're not criminals themselves, oh Lord. They don't brutalize people. They don't beat people as though they're animals. God, in the name of Jesus, deal with these issues. I pray today for President Donald Trump. Your word says that the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. I pray that you will cause that man to stop speaking things that continue to cause division. That you will cause him, Jehovah Father, when he speaks, he will speak words that bring reconciliation. I pray that God, you will give direction and insight even to the nation and to the, lead, uh, and to the police force and, and the rest of the leaders. I pray that you will speak. My God, not just as a man that is seeking even to be re-elected. I pray that he will not speak to the Father as a white supremacist or whatever else people might say he is. My God, today I pray that he will speak as a leader of your people in the name of Jesus. My God, take a hold of him, whether it means shaking him up, oh God, or sending advisors to, the, to him, or prophetic words, whatever you do. My God, I pray that that man will give a word. He will give a speech. He will give a talk. He will convene people together and he will speak and his words will bring hope will bring reconciliation will bring healing to a nation because he is a leader and i recognize that father he cannot have been a leader without your hand because you your word says that father it's you it's you who, who allows people to get into positions of leadership and so i commit him into your hands and i pray that you will do that work in him oh god in the name of jesus Give him wisdom. Guide him by your spirit, Jehovah Father. And I pray, Lord, for presidents right across the nations of the earth. I pray for kings. I pray, my Father, for, pri for prime ministers, all kinds of leaders. I'll raise them up before you. And I pray, Father, would you lead our leaders in a season like this? Would you give them wisdom? Would you show them what it is that they ought to do? I narrow down very specifically to pray for my president. I lift up President Uhuru Kenyatta before you. And I pray that God, you'll give this man wisdom. I pray that God, you'll give this man self-control. I pray that you'll give this man, Jehovah Father, insight and direction. That he'll begin to lead our nation. Not according to his desires or the desires of the people around him. But Lord, you'll be led by your spirit. He'll make decisions that are in line with you, Jehovah Father. I pray that you'll surround him with a hedge, with a wall of protection. And you'll keep him, Jehovah Father, from those that would want to scheme and do evil. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, help him, Lord. Help our leader. We commit him into your hands today. We pray that, Father, together with his deputy and the cabinet, Lord, you would cause them to lead this nation forward, to lead us, Father, where we've never been. I pray that, dear God, in the name of Jesus, you would help us in a season like this as you lead our leaders to make the right decisions. I pray that, God, you will stop corruption in our nation. Money that has been stolen. Money that has been embezzled, money that has been used wrongly in our nation. We ask that God, you may cause it to be brought back. This may look impossible, but God, tonight we are praying audaciously. We are knocking on the doors of heaven and we are praying, God, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And because there is no corruption, there is no embezzlement of funds in the kingdom of heaven, we pray that your kingdom would have an impact in our nation. Let there be change and transformation. God, we lift up our leaders before you and we trust you to glorify yourself. Oh, we trust you to glorify yourself. I invite you, my brothers and sisters, I invite you right now. Would you go ahead and just lift up your voice to the Lord in worship and in adoration because there is none like him. There is none like our God. There is none as mighty as he is. There is none as holy as he is. Oh, you see the Lord's prayer, Jesus taught us to pray. And he said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We have prayed for the kingdom of, of, of heaven to invade earth and God's will to be done here on earth. And so let's go ahead and declare that indeed there is no God. He, he is the one that we trust in. He is the almighty one. He is a great and awesome God. Just worship him right here, right now. Let's lift up our voices. Let's, let's lift up our worship. Oh, King of kings and Lord of lords, we worship you together. 
we worship you together. There is none like you. Oh, hear these praises, Lord. Hear these praises as they are lifted up to you. As they are lifted up to you. It's you that we honor. It's you that we exalt. It's you that we glorify. Oh, God of heaven. Oh, God of heaven. We exalt you and we glorify you. We glorify you. Almighty one, there is none like you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, we honor you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. I am, I am so grateful that you joined together with me, even as we prayed tonight and just lifted up issues before the Lord. And let me tell you this, our God hears prayer and our God answers prayer. And I believe that he's answering you even right now. He's answering you even right now. As we continue with our prayer service, because this is not bringing it to an end, as we continue with our prayer service, I'd like us to turn together to the book of John chapter 10. Just go ahead and do that. Just, just turn together with me to the book of John chapter 10. And as you turn in there, you know, the, the, there's a scripture that I, I, I just want us to look at. And as you look at that scripture, then we'll come back uh, to sharing the things that uh, we've been uh, sharing. If you haven't been part of our prayer service, let me tell you something. We've been, we've been looking at Jesus because there's something he says in that, in that chapter, John chapter 10, um, as he's speaking to the woman that came to the well that day. When no one else was coming to the well, she came to the well all by herself. And as she came and Jesus asked her for water and they began to debate and, uh, and discuss uh, stuff. Uh, I realize they say John chapter 10. It's actually John chapter 4 verse number 10. That, that's where I want to go. John chapter 4 verse number 10. Sorry, that, that's where I, I needed to go. Because there's something I want us to see in there about this Jesus. And so this woman... A Samaritan woman, as, uh, you know, refuses, so, so to say, to give Jesus a drink and begins to say, hey, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan and I am a woman. Why are you asking me for a drink, for water? Verse number 10, it's where I, I wanted us to read from. Um, and I, I could only see verse, uh, number 10 on my notes. Uh, it's up on the screen for me and I'm going to read from there. Uh, and I'd like you to go ahead and just read from your screen because the scripture is there. Uh, I'd like us to read this. It says, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. What is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying to this woman, If you knew who I am, if you knew me, if you knew me, you would not be talking the way you're talking. Things will change. You begin to ask. You begin to ask of me. And he doesn't say you would ask me for water. He says you would ask me and I will give you living water. And that begins to show me that Jesus is saying if you knew who I am, then there are things that you have not been asking that you will ask of me. And when you ask of those things, I will change your life completely. I will give you living water. In other words, you begin to be able to live your life completely. It, it, it may look as though I'm just speaking things and speaking them. But wait a minute. The Bible says that Jesus came so that we may have life. That we may have life and have it more abundantly. And so that simply means that there is something. When, when we get to know this Jesus, that we'll be able to live our lives more abundantly. There is something he will do. There is something that he will give us. The Bible says that God has given us everything that we need for life and godliness. That's what I'm talking about. When you know this Jesus, he changes everything about your living. And so we have been, we have been just on a journey of beginning to pick things out of, uh, out of the word of God and beginning to say, hey, we want to know this Jesus. We want to know this Jesus. And we've been picking and talking about different things. I don't have the time actually because I'm racing against time here. I don't have the time to go back and begin to pick some of the things that we've been talking about. And you can go back to our prayer, our, our past prayer services and you can see that. But today, I'd like to look at three, very specifically, three things. Three things that uh, Jesus tells us or the word of God 
God tells us about this Jesus because we want to know him. And when we know him, we will live life and live it more abundantly. Our lives shall be transformed and changed by the truth that we get to know. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And that means there's a truth that you and I have to learn. And when we learn it, it changes our lives completely. Are you ready? Remember, this is a prayer service. And so whatever it is that we learn, because I want to give us three things about Jesus that the Bible shows us or tells us about, and then we're going to pray around each one of them. And so get ready. Here we go, the first one. It may not look as much when I read it, but as I explain it, I believe it will impact your life. The first one, he is the head of the church. He is the head of the church. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 22. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 22. And then we'll look at a few other verses and just see what it means that Jesus is the head of the church. Here is what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 22. The Bible says, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. He is the head of the church. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. I'd like to read verse number 12 downwards. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning reading from verse number 12, the Bible says, what I mean is this. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 12. I'm reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 12. Just getting uh, this uh, sorted out for my screen. It says, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts from one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it will not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Just as he wanted them to be. If there were all one part, where would the body be? And uh, uh, the last verse, as it is, there are many parts but one body. Now, who has placed the parts where they are supposed to be? The Bible says God has done that. God has done that. Now, we read in, first, uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 22, that God has placed the, the Jesus as the head of the body, as the head of the church. And so, you know, there is no other head. God has placed, God has already placed Christ as the head. And then he has picked you and I, and he has placed us as members of the body of Christ. I don't know whether this already begins to impact you, but listen to this. The function of the head in a human body. You see, the head contains every sensory organ. Two eyes, two ears, a nose, a tongue that is inside the mouth. And then it houses the brain. And together, these organs function. All of them, they function together as a processing center for the body's sensory information. They, they, in other words, if I was to prick your toe or I was to cut your knee, without the head, you will not feel pain. You will not even know that somebody has cut you. Because the brain is the one that relays that information and says to the rest of the body, I have been cut, I have been affected, I have been injured, I have been attacked in one way or another. Everything you know, flows through the, the, the brain. 
everything flows through your head, so to say, if I would put it that way. When you're pricked in your little toe, that information has to travel all the way to the brain. And then the brain will relay information that comes back to the toe that says, move the feet, somebody is pricking, somebody is injuring you. Now, why is this important? Why is this information important? Because without the head, then the body becomes senseless. Oh yeah, I said it. The body becomes senseless. Without the body, we don't know what is happening. We don't know what is going on. We don't know how to respond to issues. You can be walking in the middle of a fire, and if your brain is dead, let me tell you something, you will not know you're burning. Here is something very interesting. It's possible to find a body that is perfectly okay. Every organ, every cell, every tissue, the hands, the feet, everything is okay. But if the brain does not function, then that person cannot be able to move. They cannot be able to do anything. The amazing thing is, when your brain and your eyes and your nose and your ears are functioning okay, it's possible for you to live a full life even though your hands and your feet are not okay. But if it's the other way around, if your brain is not functioning, that's it. You will not be able to leave. What, and so when you think about it from that perspective, you and I have to be connected to Christ in order for us to live fully the life you are meant to live because he is the head of the body. You will never be able to accomplish God's purposes without Christ. You will not be able to walk in the fullness of everything you are created and placed here to do without Christ. You will not be able to serve. You will not be able to worship. You will not be able to pray. You will not be able to live fully for God without God, without God connecting you to Christ. How will we know what we are supposed to do? In, in other words, the prophetic impact of the church comes from the head. It's Jesus who begins to show us what it is that we need to do, where we need to go. Remember the little toe? When it's pricked, the brain has to respond and say, move the feet. We will not be able to know how to even deal with the pandemic we find ourselves dealing in. We will not be able to know how to deal with the economy. We will not be able to know how to deal with one another, how to relate, how to build up, how to encourage, how to make a difference without our connection to Jesus. Oh, I'd like you to pray right now and just pray, Jesus, would you rule and reign in our churches? Would you rule and reign in my life? Would you help me to respond to issues the way I'm supposed to respond? Would you help me to live my life fully for you? Oh, go ahead, make it your prayer and say, Jesus, I want to live fully for God. I, I don't want to be paralyzed. I don't want to be brain dead. I don't want to be just there. All oh, my organs are okay, but I can't live. I want to live fully for you and serve your purpose and make a difference because I am connected. I am connected with the Head. I'm connected with that which is a source of my sensory and, 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 and my re reactions and, and, and all that I, I, I ought to do. I, you are the one who helps me to see. You're the one who helps me to move. You're the one who helps me to talk, to give a prophecy, to, to give direction and insight and, and guide and lead my generation. Jesus, help us. Oh, help us, Jesus. Make it your prayer. Tell him, Jesus, I want to live and live my life fully for you. I want to live in abundance. I want to walk in the fullness of your purpose. I want to glorify you and honor you and serve your purpose. Help me to stay connected to you. John, in the book of John chapter 15, he writes and says that if you're not connected to the true vine, we cannot be able to, be, to produce fruit. We'll not be able to bear fruit. We'll not be able to make a difference. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, we need to be connected to him. We need to experience a life that flows from him. We need to experience a sense that flows from him. The direction, the, the everything, the instructions, the guidance, the insight. Oh, Jesus, lead our church. Oh, would you lead ICC Mombasa? Would you be our head? Would you guide us? Would you help us to speak and talk and walk in, in such a way that we honor and glorify you? We don't just want to live for the sake of it. My God, our trust is not, not in economists. Our trust is not in the wisdom of men. Our trust is not in what people say. Our trust is in you. Our trust is in your word. Our trust is in your direction and your guidance and your insight. Lord Jesus, oh, we don't want to do things according to the wisdom and the way and the direction of the world. We rebuke that we refuse it we resist it we push it back we want to live in the fullness of all that you have for us oh god help us help us oh god oh help us oh god help us oh god 
Here is the second thing. Here is the second thing that the Bible talks about. Oh, I so love this one. Here is the second thing. We are talking about Jesus, remember? He told the woman, if you knew who it is. We are saying we want to know him. And I've just shared that he's the head of the church. And you see just how, that, uh, how important that is. The second thing is, he is our rock. He is our rock. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4. I'll read this verse and then I'll say a few things because this, this, this is powerful. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 4, the Bible says, and, and it's speaking about the children of Israel here, that they drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. Actually, let's just read from verse number one. Let, let's, let's build up the case for this story here. It says, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them and that rock was Christ. And, and so the Bible is telling us that Jesus uh, was there present together with the Israelites as they journeyed from Egypt going towards the promised land. And Jesus was the rock that followed them. The rock that they drank from. The rock that satisfied them with everything. Now Jesus speaking to his disciples and to many other people, he was teaching and he gave them the parable of the wise builder and the foolish builder. And, and the foolish builder built his house on sand. He did not dig to find the rock. And when the storms came, when the storms of life came, that building, great, the Bible says, was its fall. But then there was the wise builder who built his house on the rock. And when the storms of life came, and when the storms and everything better get is that house, when the wind was howling and the rain is falling and the storms are, 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 are rushing through the house, nothing happened to it. Why? It was built on the rock. And so Jesus is our rock. It's in him that we find safety. It's in him that we find protection. When you build your life on this rock, nothing can shake you. Not a pandemic, not an economic uh, you know, uh, destabilization or anything else that happens. It doesn't matter what happens ar around you. It doesn't matter whether people send you home and they tell you, hey, we will not be able to pay your salary for the next several months. It doesn't matter what comes your way. When you build yourself on the rock, Jesus, he will take care of you in every way. You cannot be shaken shaken by the things that come against you. Listen to me. Jesus is our rock. He is our rock. I love the fact that the Bible says that the children of Israel drank from that rock. And I can't stop thinking about the, the, the two times when Moses was sent by God one time to go speak to the rock uh, so that it produces water and the other time to go and strike the rock so that it could produce water. But when he was told to go and speak to it, he didn't speak, he struck it. Because he had already done that before. And so he thought he could keep doing the same thing that he had done before. Listen to me. You know, when it comes to Christ, you cannot just do whatever it is that you want. You've got to hear what it is that God is instructing you. You've got to build according to God's plan and purpose. Oh, listen to me. When your life is established on this Jesus, when you're built on this rock and you follow God's instructions and directions, nothing can shake you. But here is the thing. That rock produced water and satisfied and sustained the Israelites in the wilderness. And we're not talking about five people. We're not talking about ten people. We're not talking about a hundred or a million. We're talking about more than a million people in the wilderness. Jesus satisfied them and took care of them. What is it that you think is impossible with this Jesus? If he, if, if according to the figurative example the Bible is giving us, he was able to quench the thirst of more than a million people out in the wilderness. What is it that you think that he cannot be able to do or satisfy or meet or deal with? No wonder he was able to feed the multitudes. No wonder more than 5,000 people he was able to give them food to eat. 
Because that, that, that's the kind of rock that I'm talking about. Would you go ahead and just pray to this rock and tell him, Jesus, help me to build my life on you. Help me to build and establish myself on the foundation that you are. And I pray that you provide for me. You will minister to my needs. You will cause me to drink from that rock. You will satisfy me with every good thing. You will cause me to be at qui at, at, in quietness and peace, walking in the purposes of God. Would you go ahead, just make that your prayer. Heavenly Father, it's my prayer for my brothers and sisters, every one of them. Would you remove them from whatever foundation they have set and established themselves in and established them on the foundation of Jesus. Some of us, Lord, have been built on the foundation of ministers of the gospel. Some of us have been built and established on the foundation of churches. Some of us have been built and established on the foundation of religious activity. And in a season like this, when the world is experiencing a shaking of all kinds, my God, we have found ourselves shaken. We have found ourselves afraid. We have found ourselves intimidated. But I pray today, whatever storm has come against us, Lord, cause us to find our protection and our safety in Jesus. For you are our rock. You are our rock. We are established in you. When the storms come, when the shaking come, when the winds come, my God, I pray that we'll be safe in you. We'll be safe in you. We'll not be shaken. We'll not be shaken. We'll not be moved to and fro. We'll not be shaken in our faith. We'll not be shaken in our trust. We'll not be shaken in our finances. We'll not be shaken, my God, in any situation. I pray, Father, cause us to be built on that foundation. Help us to be established in you, Jesus. Our dreams, our visions. Oh, you took care. You satisfied the children of Israel all the way as they journeyed through the wilderness. You quenched their thirst and you ensured that they came safely. You led them, Jesus, into the promised land. And I pray that you will do that with us. You will take care of us. You will keep us safe. You will guide us. You will lead us. And, and my God, you will bring us safely into the fullness of everything that you have for us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, that we may serve your purpose, that we may make a difference in our day. And we may live to honor and glorify and bring praise to your holy name, Jesus. We commit ourselves to you. You are our rock. You are our rock. Would you go ahead and shout it out and say, Jesus is my rock. Oh, go ahead, shout it louder. Jesus is my rock. Oh, yes, he is my rock. You know, you might be at home. You're all by yourself. You're wondering, what will my neighbors think? You know what? It doesn't matter. Just, just shout it louder and say, Jesus is my rock. Because he is your rock. He is your safety. He is your protection. He is your place. Of refuge oh and here is the final one and I am done and I'll not say much about this Ephesians chapter 2 chapter 2 verse number 14 Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 14 because here is the thing not only is he the head of the church not only is he the rock or our rock he is also our peace. He is our peace. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 14. The Bible says the following. For he himself is our peace. All right, let me read that again. For he himself is our peace. Oh, I can read that a third time. For he himself is our peace. Who has made the two groups one? And has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. No wonder the Bible goes on to say that there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free in Jesus Christ. Because he is our peace. He is our peace. Oh, I can repeat that again. He is our peace. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse number 6, For a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us and the government will rest on his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, I love this, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. <laughs> he is a Prince of Peace. The Hebrew word for peace is the word Shalom. Shalom. And it's often used in reference to an appearance of calm and tranquility in individuals, groups, or even nations. The Greek word, Eirin, means unity and accord. And you see, Paul, in the verse we've just read, in the book of Ephesians, the, the Apostle Paul used the word Eirin to describe the objective of the New Testament church. 
but 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 the deeper foundational meaning here is uh, the, the 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 not just the unity and one accord, but the spiritual harmony and the peace, the calm and tranquility that is brought to an individual when Jesus reigns in your life, when Jesus brings you to a place of restoration and connection with the living God. Because the Bible says when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He reconciled us to the Father. He paid the penalty for our sin. Paid the penalty for our sin. Why? He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Ephesians, actually let's not read Ephesians. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1. The Bible says, therefore since we've been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Very quickly, several things here. Number one, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. There was an enmity, there was division, there was separation. But Jesus, our peace, he brought us back to God. He caused there to be peace between us and God. And so you and I do not need to worry, does God love me? Does God care about me? You know, what is God thinking about me? Is God planning to destroy me? You know, uh, with everything that is going on, you know, uh, you know the, the, the pandemic and everything, you know, is, is God punishing us? No, there is peace between us and God. There is peace between us and God. That peace was brought by our peace, Jesus the Christ. And so God is not looking for a way to punish you. He's looking for a way to bless you. He's looking for a way to intervene in your situation and in your life and to bring you to a place you've never been. There is peace between you and God. Jesus is your peace. And I pray today that all, all that fear, all anxiety, all guilt would be wiped away when you think about Jesus being your peace. He has brought you to a place. Uh, uh, and I can use the words that I, I, I mentioned earlier. He has brought you to a place of unity and accord, and, 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 and one accord. He has connected you with the Father. He has joined you with the Father. No wonder the Bible says, uh, you know, he told the disciples that, that uh, my Father and I will come and make room and come and live in you. That's what he has done. God lives inside of you. Why? Because there is peace between you and God. There is no longer any enmity or separation. You are a child of God. You're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. You, you've been reconciled and there is peace. Where there was an enmity, there is peace. And because Jesus is the Prince of Peace, he's not just brought peace between us and God. He has brought peace into our circumstances, into our environment. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's what he does. It surrounds you. It causes you to be safe. It guards you. It guards you. Oh, I know you know about the weapons of, of, uh, of our warfare in Ephesians chapter 6. But maybe you didn't know this, that peace, the peace of God is actually what gives you protection. It surrounds you. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May it protect you, may it surround you, so that in the middle of a storm you can smile. You can be in tranquility, you can have a calmness. People look at you and they wonder, what's wrong with you? How come you're not worried? And you're thinking, why should I be worried when my father is in charge? When my father is dealing with issues? I have peace. And I pray tonight that God will give you peace. Every one of you. I pray for you. I pray for the peace of God. That peace of God that causes you to be safe in the midst of all kinds of situations. That peace of God that causes you to wait. Trusting that God will come through. And sure enough, God will come through. That peace that causes you not to be anxious or worried. That peace that causes you not to be fearful and intimidated. That peace that causes you not to walk in guilt and shame. That peace that lifts you up and causes you to know that you are a child of God. I give you that peace. May Jesus show up in your life. May the Prince of Peace give you peace tonight. May there be peace in your circumstances, peace in your finances, peace in your workplace, peace in your business. I pray for the peace of God upon you. I pray for the peace of God upon you. Jesus told the disciples after he rose again from the dead and he found them in a locked room so afraid. He said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Jesus is your peace. He is your peace. Oh yeah. Go ahead and lift up your hands. Let me, let me just pray a blessing over your life. Let me pray a blessing over your life right here, right now. 
Very specifically, Lord, I pray for the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. Let it be upon my brothers and sisters. In whatever situation they are in, let the peace of God be upon them. In whatever circumstance they are facing and going through, let the peace of God be upon them. Some of them, Lord, are in situations that are desperate, wondering, when will God show up? When will God answer my prayer? I pray for your peace, O oh God. I pray for your peace. They will be able to wait when they have peace. They will be able to pray and tarry in your presence when they have peace. They will be able to fight the good fight of faith when they have peace, O oh God. When they know that they can trust you and they can depend upon you. Those, Lord, who have lived and walked in sin and, and they feel guilty and, and, and so shameful, tonight I pray that your peace will draw them close, O oh God. Your peace will draw them close and, and cause there to be peace between you and them. May they know that they are loved and they are forgiven, that their sins are washed away and they are a new creature. Lord, I pray today, do your work in the lives of your people. I pray for the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding to guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May the peace of God be upon you. Before I let you go, allow me to invite you right now to go ahead and give an offering. Go ahead and give an offering. There are several ways of giving here at ICC Mombasa. We normally do this right at the end of our prayer service. Uh, you can give through M-Pesa. Our PIB bill number is 488508. 488508 and for account you write prayer service for account very specifically you write prayer service and then you go ahead and uh, and and um, you put the money uh, the amount of money that you're giving in the pin and you finish that transaction the same way you'd finish any other mpesa transaction and so i invite you to give through that channel and uh, i invite you to give your offerings uh through uh various other channels you can send your, uh, your you know your, your offering uh through our bank account uh the name of the account is international christian center mombasa and the account number is a hundred thousand nine two three three a hundred thousand nine two three three and uh that the, the bank is NCBA Bank. And if you're outside the country, you need a SWIFT code. It's right uh, uh, on your screen. You can be able to use that. And uh, those details will help you to be able to give uh, directly into our bank account. You can be able to give using various apps that are available uh, on uh, the, the App Store, uh, whether it be uh, Android or, uh, or Apple. You can give uh, through SendWave. You can give through World Remit. You can give through uh, Simba Pay and quite a number of other apps that uh, you can be able to uh, use. All you need to do is Google for uh, you know, sending money to Kenya and uh, you will see the options that uh, you, you will get and you can be able to send those resources directly to our bank account uh, or you can be able to send directly to uh, our number, uh, which uh, uh, our office line, which is plus 254, plus 254, um, 711-443-459. 711-443-459. If you have a PayPal account or you want to give using your card and uh, you need uh, uh, just a place you can give, you can go to, uh, you know, you can go to PayPal and uh, using PayPal, you can be able to send your resources to uh, our account and uh, the account to send money to is info at iccmombasa.org. Info at iccmombasa.org. Whatever channel that you use to give, may the Lord bless you. May he minister richly to you and may he take care of you. And as we come to the end of our prayer service. May God bless you richly. May God keep you. May his peace be upon you. And I pray that you will experience him as your rock of refuge and strength. That you will build your life on Christ because he is your rock. And you will remember that he is the head. And not just remember, my, but may his life flow through you. May his power flow through you. May, may everything that God desires flow through you. May you find your direction, your insight, your wisdom and everything, your help from Christ. Oh, I bless you tonight to walk in the fullness and purpose of God. May you rejoice in him. May you dance with him. May you live for him. May your life be transformed by his power. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And so I bless you this week to have life and have it more abundantly. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for being part of our prayer service. It was such a joy having you with us. I release you. I bless you tonight. Go in peace. Go well and uh, enjoy yourself. And by the way, you can hang around. Uh, there'll be a song immediately after the prayer service and uh, you can hang around and say hi to people and uh, just get to interact and, uh, and, and just, you know, say some of the things that uh, you've experienced that have been profound. Or if you have a testimony, just give it right below uh, as uh, the song continues to play. It was such a pleasure having you. I am out. Bye-bye. <laughs>